Hey guys, so we're moving on to question four. So now we're getting into some of the more sort of hardcore geometry, if you want to call it that, but it's not too bad, okay? <clears throat> Let's read what they want from us. Use the diagram below to prove the statement that follows. The acute angle formed by a chord and a tangent at the point of contact is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. <clears throat> so basically what they are asking us to prove is the tan chord theorem. Okay, so don't be like, don't be reading that sentence and be like, oh, they're asking me some sorcery. It's not. They're just asking you to prove the tan chord theorem. Okay, <clears throat> so it took me a little bit of a, of a time to figure out what was going on here. But let's, what, we're, what we're trying to fundamentally prove is that this angle here that I've highlighted in orange, <clears throat> EAC, is equal to ABC, right? So this guy is equal to that guy, okay? Now, in order to prove that, we need to draw on a construction. What's really kind of them is they've actually told us that we need to do that, right? If they, if they hadn't sort of signposted us, we might not have known that. So the construction I've drawn in, <coughs> right, is AM, right? So it's AM, and then I'm also drawn in, I'm going to look at MB, okay? So there's many ways you can do this, and if you go to the memo, you'll see alternative ways. I'm just doing the way that seems most intuitive to me. It may not be that intuitive to you, but I just want to show you a way, okay? So I've drawn in AM and MB, <clears throat> okay? I've also drawn in MC, but I'm not going to use it. So what we want to do, right, is let's first write down, now that I've drawn this in, I now know that this is 90 degrees, and I know that that's 90 degrees, right? So let's just state what we have now that we've drawn in these constructions. So I'm going to say, <clears throat> I'm going to say M, AE equals 90 degrees, okay? And now you could be like, uh, what's the reason? Well, it is line from, uh, sorry, from center perpendicular to tangent, okay? Because this is a tangent, this is the line through center, right? So that makes it 90 degrees, okay? So we know that that's 90 degrees, but we also know that MBA <laughs> not not the not an MBA in like the Masters of Business Administration MBA in the angle here right is ninety degrees because of angles in a semicircle okay because you know that if because that's this what I've drawn through here is actually diameter right do you see that it goes through the center goes from one side to the other side it's a diameter so this is a semicircle we know that any angle of a triangle that then hits the circumference of the circle is going to be 90 degrees. Okay, so now we've got those two. But now what we also know is we know because, because um, M and C, right, so at the bottom of the segment, that angle there equals the same as that angle there, right? And that's angles in the same segment. That's the reason, right? So let me draw that to show you one more time. That angle there is the same as that angle there. So I'm going to say M... B, C equals M, A, C, right? Because of angles in same segment, okay? But now what we've actually proved is we've proved, right, that my angle C, B, A equals my angle C, A, E. Okay, that's what we've literally proved. We proved that that angle there equals that angle there. And you could be saying, uh, Margs, like that makes no sense. Well, think about it, right? We've said that this equals 90 and this equals 90. And we've said that this guy equals this guy, right? But now we see that that angle there, right, has to equal that angle there because they're both 90 degrees. The, the one of the two angles that make up that degrees those, those 90 degrees are equal. Therefore, the other one also has to be equal. Okay, so we have therefore proven our tan chord theorem. Okay, so sometimes this can be very tricky, right? But I'm trying to make it as sort of obvious as possible. So if you don't like this explanation, fair enough. You're welcome, welcome to say you don't enjoy it. But go to the memo and there's an alternative one there. I personally don't like it, but there is an alternative, okay? The memo is in the link, um, in the bio. Cool. Let's move on to the next question. So now in this question, it says, in the diagram below, B 
B, G, F, and E are points on the circle. Okay, so B, G, F, and E are points on the circle. E, A, G, <clears throat> E, A, G is a diameter. So this is the diameter. It's always good with um, uh, geometry questions to have a little highlighter on hand because it just helps understand what's going on. C, D is a tangent to the circle. That's a tangent, right? If it's a tangent to the circle, right, we have to think about what that implies, okay? Sometimes it can imply 90 degrees, although we don't know what the center of the circle is, so we don't actually know at this point. We don't know if it's 90 degrees. But then it says C, B, E is 55 degrees. Okay, so now it says determine the value of E1. So where is E1? In? Okay, here's E1. Cool, so that's what we want to work out. So let's firstly do a bit of a switcheroo here so that we can see what's going on. So 55 is going to equal F1. Okay, because of tan chord theorem, right? So you shouldn't, you shouldn't be thinking, oh no, man, what, what does that mean? Well, we just proved that in our previous question, right? We proved that this equals that. So it shouldn't be something that you're like, oh, I've never heard of that in my whole life because we, we literally just looked at it. Okay, so F1 is going to equal 55 degrees. Oh, goodness, can you see there? Cool. 55 degrees because of tan chord theorem. Remember in geometry, guys, you don't put your reasons. You will never get more than half the marks. Okay, so reasons are so important. Okay, cool. So F1 equals 55, right? But then F2 equals 35, okay? And now you could be saying, uh, why, why is that? Well, they gave us that this is a diameter, right? So we know that this is a semicircle and that's a semicircle. What do we know about the angle, right, that hits the circumference of a triangle that is drawn from the semicircle? We know that this is 90 degrees, right? So we know that this is angles in semicircle, okay? So now we have F2. But what is absolutely fantastic about F2, right, is it is angles of the same segment with E1. Let me show you, right? Let me sh first show you with my fingers. Okay, you see here, F2, go back, E1. So they are angles in same segment. Okay, angles in same segment. So what we have is E1 equals F2 equals 35 degrees because of angles in same segment. Okay, so it's actually a really nice question. It's not actually too difficult once you see what you have to do, right? It's important with these questions, and I know I keep saying this, but I say that they build on each other, right? So we proved the tan chord theorem, and then we basically use what we proved to do this question, okay? So important to think about that um, layering of questions. Okay, so that's that question done. Let's now move on to the last question of this question. Okay, now questions like this, when people start seeing cycloquads, they're like, oh, it's a bad time that's coming. No, it's not a bad time that's coming. We will figure it out. It says, in the diagram below, E, F, G, and D lie on the circle with center C. They're basically saying this is a cycloquad, okay? You should be recognizing these words. It's a cycloquad, okay? Lines E, D, and G, D, okay? are extended to H and G respectively. HB and JB are drawn with HBJ being 100 degrees. Okay, so we're given this 100 degrees. It says that FC equals 50, FCE equals 50, and FGC equals 35. So we're given a bunch of stuff. Now it says prove that this guy here, let's get another color. So we're proving that this guy here is a cycloquad. That's what they're asking us to do. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to think about what are the properties of the cycloquad, right? So the property of the cycloquad is if you add the diagonals, right, of a cycloquad, they equal 180, right? They equal 180. That is what we want to prove. Okay, so... 
no problem. Let's figure out whether we can maybe work out what D1 is. And then if we can work out what D1 is, then we can do vertically opposites and get D3. So there's like a bunch of things we can do. Okay. But let's start with what we know. Now, we were given, right, that, well, we know that this line here equals this line here, which equals this line here. Now, you could be saying, uh, how do you know that? Well, this is the center of the circle. And these lines are all just radii, right? They're all just radii. So they all equal each other. Again, it's important to understand properties of a circle, right? They're all radii. Okay, so they're all equal. So what do we know about triangles that have equal sides? Well, isosceles, right? If this is 50 degrees then, and we know there's 180 um, degrees in a triangle, those equal 65. Similarly here, right? We know that's 35. Therefore, that has to be 35. Therefore, this has to be 110. So I'm literally just saying I'm using isosceles triangle properties okay but let's focus our minds a little bit right and get to where we need to be okay so we want to figure out d1 right in order to do, do d1 right and we know this is a cyclical if we work out what f1 and f2 are we can get d1 okay so let's write down what we did already okay so let's say okay we can say f1 equals 35 degrees okay and then we can say um, this is because of the isosceles triangle uh, what is it c g f okay perfect so that also equals g i don't know if that's g2 we'll just make that g2 okay cool right so that equals g2 now we can say f2 equals 65 degrees, which equals E1, again, because of isosceles, right? But this time, it's isosceles triangle FCE, okay? So therefore, we say F1 plus F2 equals, uh, what is that? Is that 100? I feel like that's 100. Okay, equals 100, okay? So, now, we know that that equals 100, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're wanting to work out D1. Now, what did I tell you about a cyclic quad? I said, well, we know that the opposite angles, I mean the diagonal angles, have to add up to 180. So we say D1 plus F1 plus F2 equals 180 because of a, a cyclic quad. Cycla, cycla quad. We can say properties of a cycla quad, and I'm going to say F G E D. Okay, so therefore D one equals eighty. Okay, so now we've worked out what D one is. Well, now if D one equals eighty, then D three equals eighty because of vertically opposite. Okay, but now we know that D. Oh, that's D3 plus B equals 180, right? We know that, okay? Therefore, right? Therefore, DHBJ is a cyclic quad. Okay. So there's many ways you can do it, right? And you can go to the... Um, memo and look at different ways. What I said is I said, I'm just going to use what I am understanding from this drawing. I'm saying there's two isosceles triangles. There's that one and there's this one. It means that those two angles are equal and those two angles are equal. Now I said, okay, that's 35, that's 65. Add those together equals 100. If that's 100, D1 has to equal 80 because together those have to equal 180 because it's a cyclic quad. I have D1 equaling 80. Therefore, D3 equals 80. And because D3 equals 80 and B equals 100, together those equal 180. Therefore, it is a cyclic quad. Okay. So, and, and what you can say there is you, you can say um, opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary. You can put that in there as well. But this is sufficient to get your six marks. Okay. 
hope that was helpful. Let's move on to the next question.